Welcome back for another episode of Banjo Kazooie, and apparently this thing is called a cattail. Yep. Okay, nothing over there. This is what happens when you make an LP that's not in your in your native language. You occasionally get to look like a complete goofball. I envy those of you who are LPing and get to uh, be native English speakers because you can. Uh, make LPs in your own language and still manage to appeal to the largest, largest, sorry, not largest, possible uh, audience, something that I unfortunately don't really have the luxury of doing. Um, besides, I have, I honestly have no clue how, how I would manage to uh, make a decent LP in French, mostly because all the LPs I watch are in English anyway. Regardless, uh, before I head over to the last area uh, where uh, I need to go, I'm just going to take care of this Croctus here. Uh, well, that is quite the fail. Okay, there we go. As you probably noticed, uh, the more you progress into this little quest, the faster the Crocti close their mouths. Now, as a result, your timing get has to be more and more perfect. And I don't know if it's uh, obvious even to those among you who've never played the game, but uh, you don't fire off an egg instantly after pressing the button. You gotta wait a fraction of a second. So the proper timing for feeding one of those Crocti is not when it opens its, its mouth, but rather just before it opens its mouth. So, uh, the last area that we haven't checked out at all yet is a bit of a swamp maze that requires the waiting boots to go through. Die, thank you. So, um, as you can see, we have to hurry the hell up because those boots don't last forever. And there are some notes that you have to grab, by the way, so you can't afford to... Yeah, <laughs> as I was saying, you can't afford to uh, go on the inside in each turn, uh, and I <laughs> still did it anyway because you can't really miss those notes. At least I managed to make it in time, so here we have yet another segment of a Swamp Maze. And uh, at the end of this segment, I believe we have... Um, a rather annoying Jiggy, not the hardest, just sort of annoying. As you can see, there's the same switch as there was. No, I didn't want to grab the waiting boots. This is another time Jiggy. Can I get the camera behind Banjo? That would help, thank you very much. So the Jiggy appears over there, and you only have 10 seconds to get to it. And look at how small that walkway is. You can't afford to go too fast, else you're going to fall down, but you can't go too slow because otherwise you're not going to get the Jiggy. I got it at the last second, but um, probably could have done it a little faster and it wouldn't have hurt. No, sorry. This is what happens when uh, I map uh, the C buttons to an analog stick. Sometimes I do things I didn't really mean to do. Uh, because, yes, uh, it's rather hard to find a decent PC controller with uh, six uh, main buttons. Mine only has four, so I have to make do with that. So, we made it to the end of the maze, and look at that! It's another uh, of Mumbo's skulls. Now, behind this one, one that is r very easy to miss, there's a Mumbo token. I always seem to need to go to GameFAQs to figure this one out, but thankfully I remember this one, and I think I also remember this one being right here. Now, before we do the transformation, we're just going to take a look uh, on, uh, in this area. There's always something. In this case, uh, we have some red feathers and an extra honeycomb piece. Whatever. Let's try this again, but without the fail. So I'm gonna, just going to line myself up a bit differently. And there you go. That was all that was needed. Now, this transformation costs 10 Mumbo Tokens. This is the amount of Mumbo Tokens that are in Bubble Gloop Swamp, by the way. I have seven so far. And, uh, yep, this is the second transformation, uh, the Crocodile! What else? Uh, now the Crocodile can do two things. First, it's immune to a Swamp Water, so you can go in Swamp Water, no problem, while you're a Crocodile. And second thing, as you just saw, it has an attack of sorts. It just bites, but uh, don't rely on it too much. Um, I'd have to say most transformations in this game do bite. Uh, there's only the B that's a reasonably cool one, and even there, it's done a lot better in Banjo-Tooie. So, we got five notes here that we couldn't uh, grab before. Well, I could have, could have gone in there, it's not like the platform is really far. 
but at the same time, I didn't want to take uh, too much damage for no reason whatsoever when I could do this uh, as a crocodile. Now, there's... No, sorry, two more places uh, that I need to go to uh, as a crocodile. First, I'm going to go inside Mr. Vile's lair, even though I'm not going to be throwing down with him quite yet. There's a mumbo token, a few notes. Let's see, is there anything else of note other than Mr. Vile himself? Fuck you, Mr. Vile. Fuck you so hard. We got the sprint shoes that aren't activated yet. I'm gonna work. I'm gonna get to work on that shortly. But for now, um, I believe there's only one other place that I need to check out as a crocodile, and it's the area with the treetops, which is right over there. So now I'm really wondering if everything is in there because otherwise I'm gonna be really stumped as to you know where it go. So we got a few notes. That's gonna push me up to 95, still missing 5. There's a uh, Jinjo over there. It's the last one, so I get uh, Jiggy number 9, so I have all the Jiggies I'm, I'm intending to collect uh, in the short term. Two Mumbo tokens, so I got them all, so I'm only missing those 5 notes, I believe. Uh, where are those 5 notes? Okay, they're over there. It's, uh, this game has a bit of a problem with draw distance. It's not that big of a problem, but still, it's sort of annoying that uh, you you have to get really close to items so you can see them. So, I believe I have everything, so I'm gonna become a regular Baron Bird again, and uh, let's see. I, I just want to make sure. Got, I got, yeah, I got everything, so I'm gonna transform back off screen, and I'll see you over at the entrance to Bubble Gloop Swamp. And we are done with Bubble Gloop Swamp for now. Only one Jiggy left to go, and we're going to come back to it probably in the next video. So, okay, no, we had a beehive. We didn't have a waiting boots. Now, you may be wondering why uh, I'm not a crocodile, because there's a nearby secret that requires the use of the crocodile form. The reason is because I have to go over to the back area I'm going to as uh, Banjo and Kazooie first. And uh, these boots right there are all the proof you need that uh, not all uh, the waiting boots have the same duration in the game. These ones last really really, really long. You know, like, I'm gonna be able to make it to, uh, through this tunnel here, whereas on the way back, you can only reach uh, the hut that marks the entrance to Bubble Gloop Swamp, so, as I said, definite, definite proof that uh, they are in the same duration. Now, let's see, what do we have up there? So, uh, the waiting booths for use on the way back. And up there, we have an ice block. You want to break this ice block. This uh, will uh, free up a passage that you need the crocodile in order to get through. But I'm going to take care of that once I get out of uh, Bubble Gloop Swamp, once I have defeated Mr. Vile. And in the meantime, we have opened up the entrance to world number five, Freeze Easy Peak! Which, uh, we're going to get to relatively shortly. The entrance is, that we just saw is a bit deeper in the lair. So, I'm, I'm just gonna show you guys, well, not because I, I really want to, but because I have to anyway. I'm gonna show you how far you can go with these boots. I'm just gonna shut up so you can hear the ticking. So as you can see, much shorter than the last one. So uh, now we are, well, I would say completely done with this area of the lair, but there is still, once again, I can't stress this enough, we're still missing a Jiggy inside Bubble Gloop Swamp. And uh, on that note, we also need to do something about that uh, Jiggy that's, uh, that's in a cage inside that Scarecrow thingy. I still don't know whether to call it a Scarecrow. It definitely does look like a giant scarecrow, but for now, we're going to head into the next area of Gruntilda's lair, which, uh, if memory serves me correctly, needs 260. Yeah, I remember that. After that, it's 350 and 450. But, um, yeah, now we can access uh, the next area of Gruntilda's lair. We're going to end up in uh, a, a desert-like area. Uh, okay, we got mummies here. Those are the first undead enemies you encounter in the game. You can only permanently defeat them 
with a gold feather. You can neutralize them for a bit with other attacks, but they require a gold feather to permanently defeat. So, this switch made a, a shock spring pad appear um, around this uh, jar, so... Oh yeah, there is also a mumbo token uh, behind the sar uh, sarcophagus, sarcophagus, I'm not really sure to be honest. Uh, yeah, no, another case of me being a goofball because I'm not really perfectly bilingual. Oh, come on! Yeah, as you might expect, you have to uh, get inside this jar. Once again, I failed. There's also a glitch where you can get the... Um, the, the jiggy inside the sarcophagus by... Um, I don't know what you have to do, really, so I can't really pull the, j the glitch off, but do know that it is possible. Anyway, going inside the jar allows you to get the... the the Jiggy that was inside the Scarecrow, so that's another problem solved. Unfortunately, we end up back here, but it's not really that much of a problem because we only have to move up one room anyway. Now, I believe that we are done with this little desert area, uh, at least for the very short term. We're going to come back here quickly, but for now, let's move on to the next room of the lair, which features the entrance to Freezy Peak. Okay, let's kill this thing, then destroy the spider web. It requires requires three eggs, I believe. There we go. We're gonna. Uh, it may not look like it, it's uh, of any use, but trust me, it'll be useful later. So now we have a cauldron that will create a shortcut to uh, back near the room where uh, the puzzles for Treasure Trove Cove and Clanker's Cavern are. So that's our first of three, no, four! I always forget the one near the end. What The first of four shortcuts that we have actually activated. Now you want to head up there. There's uh, another note door with 450 notes. We only have 400, so we can't go through there quite yet. Not that I intended to anyway. There's another spider web hiding. Um, another cauldron. This one is going to uh, correspond to another cauldron that we're going to encounter later on in the game. I'll be sure to point it out when I do. So, now, we... Yeah, I can go to to show you the entrance to Freeze Easy Peak mostly because there's a, a mumbo token in the area. I'm not intending on entering Freeze Easy Peak quite yet, even though it is world number five. I want to head into world number six so I can get the upgrade to be able to uh, defeat Mr. Vile, but um, that... Okay. Now, I... Does this do what I think it does? Yep. Uh, there's a flying pad that appears uh, where I cleared uh, that spider web, but uh, it's not going to do much right now because uh, it, it's required to get two uh, Jiggies in Gruntilda's lair later on in the game, and as you just saw, there's a time limit, so we, it's not like we could do anything with that in the first place. Instead, let's move on to the next area. There's a note door that requires 350 no uh, notes. We have 400, so we are okay. There isn't too much that we can actually do in this area. There's the puzzle to world number six, which is Gobi's Valley, which is going to be our next destination. So let's just unlock that and um, go back to the entrance, I guess. Uh, there is a uh, past the puzzle for Gobi's Valley. There is the entrance to world number seven. But uh, we can't, uh, we can't uh, open that world quite yet, so it would be entirely useless to go there. So I'm not gonna waste your time at all. I'm just going to head back to the entrance to Gobi's Valley. I'm just going to be doing a quick in and out to get the sprint shoes uh, to be able to use them uh, against Mr. Vile, uh, because other than that, I'm not gonna be collecting anything in Gobi's Valley. That's not my intention, at least. Now, of course, I'm gonna do it later, but I do mean later. Now, to get to Gobi's Valley, you gotta smash this wall. There are some wading boots which um, will prevent you to travel over... Well, there's sand, and then there's 
Well, we, I guess we could call it Death Sand and sort of a tribute to Death Water because this sand harms you just like uh, Swamp Water, so it's definitely something you want to avoid. Now, next time in Banjo-Kazooie, we're going to head to Gobi's Valley to get the Sprint Shoes, and then we're going to face off with Mr. Vile!